everyone. Today's video will be about developing a compost bin. So I need to talk a little bit about what I've got here and it is a three-part bin. It's not perfect but we have made it work. Well hopefully we will have it working. Um, I wanted to talk about a few kinks in it. So it rained the other day and this because it's just a fabric cloth basically around some pallets uh, it created an area where a bunch of water's in here, so our next step is going to be to find a way to have something kind of drain out the back of it and down around it, so it's not doing that. And maybe we could even feed that water sinking over into that flower bed. I'm not sure, but that's one thing about this. I don't have anything to cover up these at the moment, but I do have a door on one, and that's kind of nice. So we've got these. Uh, things that you just kind of like push back yeah you push back and pull up on both and that's where hopefully a finished pile will go at some point so I'm doing hot composting with this bin and the aim is to do a what a, I'm reading about called a Berkeley method I'm happy to be sharing with you today information about one of the many forms of composting that exists I chose to learn about the Berkeley hot composting method as it seemed, although a bit intensive, to allow the creation of compost in a pretty timely manner. So you can do it in, what's, uh, 14 days up to two months. So it really just depends on how well you keep to the schedule. So at first you let it sit for four days, and then you come and turn it from the outside to the inside, and... That's basically it. You do it on a schedule that I will actually uh, leave a link to in my blog with along with this video. So you can kind of see for yourself because I could explain it, but if you're anything like me, you will hear what I have to say and then just have to go look it up again anyway. Anyway, so as long as I can get my ratios correct, my carbon to nitrogen ratios, which are your browns generally, and your greens generally. Uh, the browns being carbon, the carbon or the nitrogens being greens. So I, I think that will take me some time. I think I went a little light on my nitrogens this time, but I just kind of went with it to see what I can do here. Um, I uh, also will need to focus on getting my heap to a good internal temperature. Ideally, that's going to be 100 to 130 degrees internally, and then I have researched some ways to activate my heap. So say your internal temperature just completely dies down and then you have to start all over getting that temperature back up. So some of the ways that I have found to do that are to use what are called biodynamic accumulators. So fancy word for different kinds of plants that have chemical components in them able to get the heat going again. And those examples of those are yarrow, comfrey, or nettles. I believe there are other things like animals or dead dead animals or, or some fish. But I think that since I'm new to all of this, I personally will be sticking to plants and possibly chicken manure because I've had a couple people offer me that along the way now. So I've got a few packets of yarrow I haven't grown yet but there's that and that's part of my plan and where's my thermometer ah got one of these to make sure I can check my temperature and I will likely end up having to just for safety use some gloves and it's really nice this thermometer I found it tells you when you're active when you're hot and when you're warm so you definitely don't want to go above that because then you just that you make it so your pile has to be reactivated and you start all over from the beginning once more. Handy dandy thermometer in there. It's uh, getting the temperature as it is right now. And I'll check it again over the next couple of days. So the process isn't perfect, but I have a pile here. 